What is up guys, welcome back to the channel and today we are dropping in the brand new EC4P motor from Electro & Co. We're going to swap out the MY1020 and I'm going to show you a step by step procedure on how to do it safely and correctly. And then we are going to drop the brand new EC4P motor in the bike. Also stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to show you a step by step procedure on how to set up your Kelly controller using the Bluetooth module. So stay tuned guys and make sure you give this a thumbs up. Quick tip here guys, when removing the motor from the swing arm, make sure you put something protective on the ground, whether it's a piece of foam, a towel, or a piece of cardboard. Just make sure you have something underneath the motor, so just in case when you're removing it and slips out your hands, it doesn't fall to the ground, gets banged up, or damages the sprockets. Huge thing here guys, remember, the sprocket is on reverse threaded, so if you tighten it the wrong way, you will likely break the shaft or damage something, so just make sure you got to go in the right way. All right guys, so once you're connected to the DC Inducer app, we are going to drop in our temperature settings for the motor. You wanna make sure this thing is safe and working reliably. So the first thing you're gonna do, very simple, is go to the high temp EN and place in number one. This just turns on that setting. Second, you're gonna turn in your high temp cut, which is 170, and then your high temp resume when it drops down to 120. These are just the ba basic uh, parameters sent in from Electro & Co. themselves. All right, next step we are going to do is go over, scroll up and click auto identify. It says no off the back. All you're gonna do is click yes. At the top you can see with the tips right there, this is your auto off and it, that's how it's gonna read it. So once you do that and you click yes, you are now ready to write that into the system. So you're gonna click the little W at the bottom right hand corner of the app and then turn off your bike. Now the next very important thing you have to do is make sure that back tire is elevated off the ground. Do not turn on the bike with the tire on the ground because what it's going to do when you turn the bike on, it's gonna auto calibrate that back tire and that's how it's gonna read its parameters. So the first thing you wanna do is go ahead, just tilt the bike up or put it on a stand and then go ahead and turn on the bike. You're gonna hear a couple of clicks and the wheel's gonna turn. Sometimes the throttle won't read right away. You're gonna hear a couple of beeps. All you have to do is turn the bike off one more time and try it again. Once it does, it may likely spin backwards. This is okay. You do not have to worry about anything. All you gotta do is jump back into the system and you are gonna go over to reverse output, which is right above the auto identify. So you're just gonna click yes. Then you are going to click W once again, make sure it writes into the system and save. Okay guys, it's very simple. That's the only thing that's gonna flip the input so your throttle is going to be okay. 
So once it's written, turn off the bike and then all you have to do is turn it back on one more time. That way it reads and there you have it guys. The motor is working. You have now got this beast of a pocket rocket in your hands. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll be more than willing to help you. And uh, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more content like this or have any questions, let me know. And with that, be safe, everybody. Make sure you gear up, ride safe, and I'll catch you all on the next one.